Hello everyone, my name is Clementine, welcome to Clementine Creative and today I'm here with another character video. So last time we left off with this line art, uh, you know, front and back view. We also did this pose uh, front and back um, that you see on the right. Now I really liked it and I said why not make this pose in three quarter view and then paint it, right? Uh, so that's what I did. And as you're seeing here, I'm doing this very basic line art, nothing too complicated. And the reason why I'm not doing a too complicated line art, you know, very detailed and whatnot, is because I already have a line art on the right side, right? So there's no reason for me to to make another three-quarter detailed line art, right? It's it's meaningless. And before I get too much into this, I want to say that doing, you know, painting for production, the way I'm doing it now is not a very good idea. So you don't want to start painting like I did, you know, start at the face and go from the face down. Let's say that first the face, then you do the body and then you do the legs, right? Why is that? The reason why is, and I want to just stress out, this is, I never do it like that, right? I always uh, just put color everywhere, I start detailing everything out and then I, you know, I then go into more details, right? But basically, the whole image, if you look at it from far, is you know, it's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty nicely painted. And now what I'm doing is, you know, starting from the face and going down, which is bad. And the reason why it's bad is because it's not production safe. Now, what does production safe mean? It basically means if you're working in house, right, and an art director comes to you and he says, um, "Can you hand this off to the freaky guy? We we need to make it, right?" And then you only have like your head and your body made, but your legs are still completely blank because you spend so much time into detailing everything else. It's gonna be a, a problem because you can, you know, hand off just like no legs but just upper body, right? Uh, it'll be very unprofessional and you know, kind of fishy. Like, are you even capable of doing this, right? So y you want to make sure that when you're doing painting, right? And when I say painting, uh, it sounds really weird, but just bear with me. Painting, this word it sounds really weird coming from my mouth. Anyway, uh, when you're doing painting, it's it's important that you work on the whole image, right? So, what I usually do is I, I color sample, right? So I pick the colors that I like, and I put them on the piece. You know, color in the clothes, the scarf, the face, the hair, everything. Very roughly. Then I add rough shadows. I also add rough highlights and then I start detailing the entire piece a little bit and then once I have everything roughly detailed you know when when you're looking from afar it looks okay right when I have that then I go into you know into the face and I start refining the face and move down right that's my workflow usually what happened here is that I was making this video and I was filming it and I did you know this process that I usually do and it sucked, right? The painting sucked. It was so bad. And I deleted it. I was just like, you know what? I cannot put this on the internet. And I just scratched it, right? And I started a new one. I already had, like, you know, the body done. But it was so bad. And I said, you know what? I cannot put this on the internet, right? So I scratched it. And my confidence level fell down. So when I started, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to refine the face. I'm going to play around with the face. And if the face works out, uh, then I'm going to, you know, then I'm probably, you know, my morale is going to raise again, right? So I'm gonna have more confidence and I'll be able to move on. And that's how I did the entire piece. And I don't recommend you doing it that way, uh, but if, if you do, just make sure that, you know, at least get the colors in first and just basic shadows and basic highlights. So right now I'm applying um, color, you know, making, I'm basically deciding on the colors as I go, but I already have the basic idea in my head. So I didn't, you know, I didn't make a color palette separately for this. I did, however, make the color palette for her skin. Uh, so, you know, this will be a downloadable file and you'll have everything in layers uh, and the background will be transparent. So you'll be able to move this character in a different, um, in a different background and whatnot. Um, but yeah, there is a skin color palette which you can use and you can modify to your needs. Um, but anyways, um, I had a basic idea of what I wanted it to do, but you know, deciding as I go. So uh, I'm just throwing in, you know, um, the zipper, um, just making belts, you know, things like that. So it's you know, not hard work. Digital painting generally is not very hard. Uh, when I started out, 
digital painting was the worst thing ever, right? It was really hard. I didn't know how to do it properly. And the reason is because I was so used to line art that I tried to, you know, draw the paint. Uh, and by the way, this is some, you know, this term I heard from Fang Zhu at fzd.com or fzdschool.com, whatever. Um, I heard, you know, from him, like, you know, you're trying to draw the paint. And it's so true. It's true, you know, you're literally trying to draw paint. Uh, but that's not how it works. You need to apply, uh, basically, you need to apply light, right? Like I'm doing right now. I'm applying light. I'm not really drawing any lines, right? And that's uh, one key difference. And that's why it's really hard to translate from line art to painting when you're starting out. Uh, a very good tip is to never give up. I didn't give up and I got pretty far. And believe me, when I started out, I was like desperate. I was desperate to, to do this and I did everything I could and I practiced so hard but man it just didn't look good it really didn't look good but you know with practice you get there and I'm not saying well it looks amazing now because you know all these professionals you know everybody just you know I know people who would so better than I do um, but you know you yeah sure you compare yourself to others but don't let that take away your confidence right uh, don't let it be so daunting be like oh god i gotta get there right don't you know don't think about it that way uh think about it it's gonna be awesome when i do get you know that you know that far when that person is um because when you get that far that person is probably going to be a lot better than you know he was he's now and you're gonna have a new goal so instead of being depressed yo this guy's so much better than me uh be motivated like i am i'm always motivated uh you know i always say oh it's not good you know my work is not good i realize that it's not bad but I don't want to admit myself that it's good. It motivates me to think that my work is not as good. You know, it, it's basically a motivation like, yeah, move on, right? Move forward, you know, make it better. With time, it'll, it'll become even better. So, you know, that's how I motivate myself. And maybe you can, you know, as well. But everybody has their own way of motivating. So that's not a given, right? So um, I also want to stress out that I will uh, change the design a little bit. So every time I do a painting... I may, I, you know, when I'm painting, I realize, you know, this would maybe look better this way. So you're gonna see me change the design on the painting a little bit. I'm not going to fix this on the line art, however, but I would. Normally I would, you know, I would go back, you know, fix it on the line art. The line art and the painting have to be the same, obviously. And normally I would do this, but I didn't. Now, I never do it now. I, I would if, um, you know, this was for actual production, I definitely would, right? Obviously, and I would definitely design even in line art stage. A lot, a lot more, not just a character in a mask, I would probably design every little thing, you know, how it's made. Since this is for YouTube, uh, I, I took a little bit of um, the easier route, you could say. So the hand there is, you know, basically kind of obscured by her body. Uh, oh, one thing that uh, I really like about this design is how in, uh, how you can basically see her ribcage. Now it kind of looks like it's made out of plastic or something, but I really like that effect. It kind of uh, makes it look like she has really tight clothes. And I like that because uh, I would assume that she does have tight clothes so that they don't fly around whenever she's climbing or she's trying to do something, right? Oh, so right now uh, here you're going to, or you are, uh, seeing me uh, design the belt buckle. And um, I had a lot of fun with this one. So what I like to do now and what I failed to do in the past is not design things, you know, thoroughly. So when you have something like a belt buckle, play around with it. You can create anything because it's a game, right? Obviously, in real life, it might not work, right? But in a game, it can. Anything can work in a game, right? So play around. So here you can see me uh, making in an extra belt, right? And this belt is going to be the safety belt. You know, in the last video, I explained that the belts on the side are basically safety belts for when she's climbing and she can strap herself on a wall. Well, that thick belt, and I'm using the word belt a lot, I know, just bear with me. Um, this black belt is basically the safety mechanism. I'm not gonna use the word belt because it's just gonna be really weird. So it's basically the safety mechanism for her. So she has those things strapped on and those are really strong, right? They can hold her. She's not that heavy. She's probably about, I don't know, 50 to 45 kilograms. Very light, right? Ninjas were usually very light uh, so that they could, you know, support their weight, uh, being able to, you know, lift themselves up. If you look at bodybuilders, um, sure, they have muscles, but 
rarely can they truly support their weight. And by that, I mean, uh, you know, they cannot do a lot of pull-ups, let's say, right? They can, but not as much as, let's say, a climber can, right? A climber has a very light body and it has enough body, uh, enough muscle to support his weight. And this is what ninjas were basically like, you know, that's why they could, you know, climb on roofs and stuff like that and not get too tired. Re oh, obviously, there was training involved, but they weren't heavy. So, even this, you know, uh, belt that she has, her safety belt, is strong enough to protect her because she only weights that much so there's no need for it to you know be able to support I don't know 500 kilograms right no no need right so we only need to support about 45 to 50 and if there's ladies watching this and I'm totally failing at getting the weight uh, I'm sorry I don't know how weight works but I feel like 45 to 50 is a small amount um, anyway uh, I just I threw in the swords. I really like how the swords turned out. Uh, I like the handle. I like the whole you know first it's kind of bluish black and then it has like this red wrapping at the end of it and this metal in between. I really like it. And where did this idea come from? I actually watched a lot of knife making videos about a month ago, uh, and uh, this one person uh, made this um, knife handle that had this metal piece in between, and I really like that. And as I was doing this, uh, I recalled it and I was like, you know, it would be really nice if she had this sort of a design, so I wanted to get the wrapping, but then you know this, this metal piece in between. And I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, also, what you're gonna see later is that I changed the design of the sword. So, in the line art, the, the sword is kind of normal, like you see now, I, I copy it over. Um, hopefully you're getting it, uh, maybe you're not. Uh, I wanna um, just say this, uh, happened in the last video. Uh, sometimes the audio will not exactly follow up with the picture so if I say something and it's not happening it probably will still happen or it has already but most of the time it, it probably still will happen so if that happens I'm, I'm really sorry um, but hopefully you've seen the sword now and what I did is add a little hole in it and I thought that kind of looked cool uh, so again I'm trying to get the usefulness and the entertainment side the blade by itself is already useful right it's a tool for killing but, you know, adding some entertainment side to it would be that I made a hole, right? It just looks cool. So here I'm creating the throwing knife or the kunai, uh, adding red wrapping to it. Oh, the main colors, I guess, for this character were red and black, right? Maybe a slight hint of blue, uh, which you're going to see later uh, when I do a different version of her. I say different version, but when I was doing it, I, in, my thought, I, in my head, I kind of thought about it as um, you know when you're getting strong enough or when you're unlocking things in a game uh, you get certain items right to help you out in missions so I was thinking of and I'm not gonna spoil it I'm gonna wait till this is finished and it's gonna be really soon so um, as a matter of fact I can probably start saying it because it's gonna happen by now so uh, I thought that you know she would be uh, she would get this um, cloak shadow cloak I called it and what would do is it would help her hide uh, better in the shadows she would be just you know more silent her parkour skill parkour skills would be so much better uh, but she would have you know only four swords uh, which is not a great loss right obviously uh, but she would be quite weaker you know considerably weaker but you know she would be able to climb a lot more so here seeing me doing it and it's not very hard anything that you have to paint on top of a character is usually very easy uh, so here did another version uh, i really like this version uh, and personally in the game i would use this one uh, more than the regular version Here she will not wear the mask you also see that um, I also wanted to say something earlier. Yeah, you maybe saw me changing the picture to black and white and then black back to color and Then again black to white and back To color. It's very complicated to say that believe me too many bees um, What I did that is to check values so you know the fundamentals of you know painting are values that's the you know the very basic stuff is, if you want to create something that looks like in 3D, you need to be very careful of values. So, by, you know, making a layer and coloring it completely black and making the layer, uh, basically layer bleed blending go to um, saturation, that way I can check the values. And values were really good, you know, they were really well, so I didn't have to fix a lot of things. Uh, so here I'm just, uh, hopefully, I'm, you know, you're seeing this as I am, I'm fixing the, the main the normal look, I added in the swords, you know, the handles, 
um, no, not the handles, the guards. Man, I'm really confused right now. Uh, so here I'm working on a little bit more on the cloak. Um, I, you know, as I was working on the cloak, I was thinking, you know, what more can I add to it? So I also wanted to make a third look, but I know I, I, nothing clicked me, right? So there's, there's still a limit as to what you can do. Obviously, I could have done something, and I couldn't think of it. And then, you know, it hit me, uh, why not improve this one to the point where it would look, it could stand on its own. And here I added a little bit of a mask, like uh, Hit Girl from uh, Kick-Ass, if you watch that. Uh, and I tried to do a little buckle on the top, on the shoulder, you know, where the where the, basically the cloak goes in. I tried to make a buckle, it didn't look okay, so I, you know, I scrapped it away. So it didn't work out, obviously, as you saw, and, you know, I just deleted, you know, not attached to it or anything like that. So here I'm just fixing it a little bit, and now you're gonna see, I'm gonna, you know, add a little bit of blue. Reason why I'm doing that is to create this mythic look, like, you know, this um, second option, like the shadow cloak, is, you know, something that you would use, you know, it's very, you know, very, very well concealed, you know, can conceal yourself in the shadows, and it looks more mysterious. Um, one little tip that I have for all of you guys out there is when you're working on a dark character, right, so the character has very dark clothes, make sure that the background is a little bit darker. Um, Reason why you don't want to have a white one because white is so strong that it obscures all the dark color. So you want to have the you know dark background which brings out the darkness of her of the clothes of the characters. You're seeing that the character now you know is very well visible compared to earlier when it was a white background. So here it is, you know, presentation, you know, just zooming in on the normal version, going down. Hopefully the voice will follow up with the picture in the video. Uh, if not, again, I'm sorry, but I think it will. I think, you know, I think it will follow. Uh, here I'm showing the Shadow Cloak version. I really like the Shadow Cloak version. Um, personally, I like it more than the normal, you know, normal clothing. Uh, but I'm glad I did both, you know. They, it, they look really well together, and I feel like this was a really nice project. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making it. Here you can see the line art and the painting together. So, this is how it turned out in the end. Um, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video, I had a lot of fun making it, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Let's say she would maybe use her swords in a certain time.